landmarks. The main criterion is that the author must have passed away, but the house must still exist. Right. So um, the author's dead, the house is alive. Right. And I've written by a number of these sites all my life until I started this project. I didn't realize some of these places they're worth and what they were about. And it is really uh, actually a very, very fertile field for investigation. And I mean, I could give 10 PhD students or master's degree students a thesis topic. Behind every headstone or every grave, then there's a story of a life that once was. We have t-shirts for the young people to, to, to identify them. Prior to the t-shirts, they go to a bicycle safety course. Uh, the bicycles are inspected to make sure they're safe before they even drive on the course and show them the other uses for bicycles other than the recreation, job opportunities, tour the city, learn the neighborhood, learn the historic landmarks in the neighborhood. We'd like to expand the whole tour thing throughout the city, identify other landmarks in it, and after clubs form, you know, take a ride up to Northwest, but between their home site and Northwest, identify the different landmarks, I hope to cover the whole city one day that you can get on this tour that we offer and you have your map, your lead riders, and an activity that you can involve your family, you know, mothers and fathers, sisters, brothers, and it'd be an outing. So for those who can't afford to go on a vacation out of the city, you have a vacation within the city of landmarks that have been here their whole lives and now they get a, a different appreciation of them. My project is the creation of uh, five panels, uh, sort of museum quality panels, that are going to explain the history of Pierce Mill and also introduce or reintroduce city residents to the fact that the mill has been closed but it's opening this fall. But along with this um, farmstead and, and large land holding, they also had um, the largest number of slaves in Washington at the time of the Civil War. Now, I mean, there, there is a, a sort of a, I think, a basic knowledge of slavery, for example, in Washington, D.C., but actually, as I've done research, and other people have done research that I know, you know, they've uncovered a lot of information that really wasn't known five, ten years ago. We, we are of the school of thought that you need to examine where you've been to flavor where you are to prepare for where you're going. And so we certainly think that uh, these 36,000 individuals, uh, the, the celebrating of their lives uh, and the understanding of the challenges they, that they faced in their lives will, uh, will bring an overall enrichment to those of our community today. This would certainly be a platform for educational purposes to identify, uh, as I said earlier, major contributors to the development of society, uh, to, to, uh, to, to people that created or contributed to the significant development uh, for things that we enjoy today. As well, we're also doing a video about our historic synagogue, which was constructed in 1876. It's, um, as I mentioned, the oldest synagogue in Washington, D.C., and um, we're trying to give a sense of the, particularly the people who, um, who built the synagogue and why they broke away from another Jewish congregation. You know, for example, when we're talking about the architecture, well, here's what some other buildings at that same time looked like. We, when we talk about the um, synagogue dedication, we can point out the newspaper stories. For example, the newspaper stories are invaluable to us because the interior of the building was essentially gutted during the mid-20th century. The newspaper articles describe in extreme detail what it looked like inside. So a lot of the reconstruction was based upon those articles. Now we can show them to the visitors. And now the visitors can really get a, um, get a stronger sense of the building's past and the neighborhood's past through these panels. 2010 and 2011, um, that's when we actually created a CD with, I believe, 89 schools that we researched thus far. And on this project, um, this cycle I should say, 
2011-2012, we want to um, research about 50 to 75 additional public charter schools um, and also have a CED as well as attempt to look into other um, technologically savvy um, outlets to actually provide information to our audience. We're interested in um, just trying to allow children to realize how important the name of their school um, is in, towards their actual education because yes they may go to a, a big name school but some of the students don't even know who that school is named after so we wanted to allow them to not only um, be proud of getting their particular education but also be proud of the school that they're actually in. Um, we are setting up a website called DC Author Houses and um, the idea behind it was to try and document houses that still stand by authors who have lived in Washington, D.C. We found um, a house where Zora Neale Hurston rented rooms when she was a student at Howard University. And the house is in horrible shape and it's really, it's just a modest brick row house on Sherman Avenue. and. Uh, Every time I go past it, and I live not far from there, so I go past it a lot, and every time I go past it, I think, the people who are living there have no idea, no idea that yeah. such a famous author who has become a part of the canon of American literature lived in this, this place. Right. Um, so it's, some of it is just revealing a sort of secret history of the city.